Acts chapter 2 shows us what we can do to be saved from this perverse generation. These are the end times when the Lord restores his kingdom. Already, we are emerging from the spiritual dark ages as we approach the last days, the second age of the kingdom. Ephesians 2, 7, Ephesians 3, verse 20. We now realize that Satan is the man of sin, Romans 12 through 21. That he has been ruling over this world during the apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. He's been ruling over this world with the preaching, the Bibles, and the religions of men. Genesis 2, 17. Genesis 3, 4 through 5. The Holy Spirit, that is the truth, the supernatural, objective truth from God, is being poured out upon all men. As the Bible is under a 40-year restoration, Micah 7, 15. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12. The Bible from God is the perfect law of liberty, also known as the royal law. It's also known as the wisdom from above, James 1, 25. Also, it's known as the rod of iron that Christ will wield to rule over this world in the second coming of Christ. James 1, 25. Through chapter 2, verse 8, you read about the perfect law of liberty and the royal law, both in that context. Judas, verse 3, we read about the Bible from God that's been hidden away now for 1,680 years. If you have ears to hear, then you must repent. For the second coming of the Lord is at hand. Acts 17, verse 30, times of ignorance. Well, we had to be in great ignorance to be in apostasy. At the time of ignorance, God overlooked. In other words, you were saved by grace and not at all through the religions and the Bibles and the philosophies of men. Times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Revelation 18, 4, come out from among them. What? The religions of men, the Bibles of men, the ways of men, Gnosticism. <laughs> In Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, why do we want to come out of them? Why do we want to come out of the kingdoms of men? Why do we want to come out of the moral standards of men? Why do we want to come away from the Bibles of men? Because the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Isaiah 55, verses 9. But in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, we read that the kingdom of God, the moral standards of God, the wisdom of God, the Bible from God is going to break up and consume. All the kingdoms, the Bibles, the wisdom, the religions of men. The second coming of the Lord. Save yourselves from this perverse generation, Acts 2, verse 40, and John 8, 32. So what does Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, have to do with modern man? In 2022, I mean, right now. Now, the gift of the Holy Spirit is salvation. Salvation brought down from above, from heaven. But sub salvation was given up by denominationalists who traded the preaching of Christ for the preaching of men, or the word, the ways of God for the words, the ways of men. 340 A.D., 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. They traded the Bible from God. Men traded the Bible from God for a strange fire. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. Yes, we've been in apostasy the last 1,680 years. But only the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. No, we can't be like God. It's Satan promised that we could. Only the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. So the Holy Spirit records for us through Luke, this is the perfect law of liberty, the rod of iron that Christ is going to rule over the second age of the kingdom with. He now records for us his work the first 10 years of the church. 
And we can never deal properly with subjects like the Holy Spirit. Because not only does the preaching religions and Bibles of men not work, but also that Gnosticism, all of it, denominationalism, atheism, fascism, environmentalism, it is all the mega sword that Satan wields over this world. Revelation 6, verse 2. And it is the cause of human suffering. Now God allowed men to suffer for these past 1,680 years because of free moral agency. He wanted us to learn the cost of doing things men's way instead of God's without it costing us our souls. That's why the book of Job is about patience. Hold on. So we're going to have to deal with six back then. The Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Humanity is going to have to deal with 6,000 years of Gnosticism, doing things man's way. Because at the end, Christ is going to show us how it's done his way. Acts chapter 2. Now what does Pentecost have to do with us? And when the day of Pentecost, the 50th day is what that means, was now come, and they were all together, it's the 12 apostles in one place. And suddenly they came from heaven a sound as the rushing of a mighty wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues, tongues of fire on the apostles' heads. Why? Because God was given to the world the Bible. And the Bible from God is special. Then come back void. It's not like denominational Bible. It works. And so they would be able now after this miraculous event to speak in all different languages. Anyway, tongues parting asunder like as of a fire, and it set on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now for 40 years, the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts would be among the Christians, and he would speak through them, certainly on occasion, what we're going to read here, Pentecost, when Peter preaches, the Holy Spirit speaking through Peter. And the Bible was given to humanity over a 40-year period of time. And this is the Bible that would rule over, that Christ would use from heaven to rule over this world. Judas chapter 3, the once for all time having been delivered to the saints face. It's just delivered one time because the kingdom is eternal. It will just be broken up by 1,680 years of apostasy. But God gave to man here through this miraculous event and through the next 40 years the Bible from God. But now the thing for us to understand now is the Bible from God is only going to be given to humanity for 1,000 years. For 1,000 years. Why? Because God wanted billions to have the opportunity for salvation from heaven. All of the righteous people were saved by, all of the righteous for the past 1,680 years were saved by grace and not at all by the works the religions, the Bibles, and the philosophies, and the doctrine of men. And so God wanted billions to be in heaven with him rather than a few thousand or whatever denominationalist would have you believe of them that get to go to heaven. The ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Now there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound was heard, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and they marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how hear us every man in our own language wherein we were born, Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, and Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and parts of Libya, 
about Serene and sojourners from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in their own languages, the mighty works of God. They were all amazed and were perplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. And now Peter would give some God-breathed words, the Holy Spirit speaking through him. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted his voice and spoke forth unto them, saying, You men of Judea, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and give ear unto my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, 9 a.m. But this is that which has been spoken of through the prophet Joel. Joel talks about the last days. We are in the last days, the second coming of the Lord. This is about us. We can now understand these words because we have the Bible from above that's being poured out upon all men. And we can understand the prophecies throughout Scripture. And it shall be in the last days, says God. I will pour forth of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. We're not going to prophesy. But we're going to give you words of prophecy. We're going to explain them to you. You see, we don't need the same kind of miraculous gifts that first century Christians had. The next 40 years, we're not going to be given the Bible for the first time. The Lord is going to restore the Bible for humanity. And then when that's done, of course, the second age of the kingdom is at hand. Second coming of the Lord. So right now, the second coming of the Lord is at hand, meaning in about 40 years. We have come out of this. We are coming out of the spiritual dark ages right now. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days will I pour forth of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above. Again, for 40 years, we're going to experience a supernatural event of God pouring truth out upon humanity. Truth, the hidden man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, we read about the hidden or the secret revelation of God, the hidden manna. But God has given us back the Bible supernaturally. Now we can pray for the wisdom from above, James 1 verse 5. And the Lord God Almighty will grant it. God has kept us ignorant of these things for 1,680 years. God has been in control. If that doesn't prove the existence of God to you, nothing would. If that's not supernatural, I don't know what supernatural is. If you don't marvel at the wisdom of God, you won't marvel at anything. So we won't be prophets, but we'll teach and distribute the preaching of Christ about the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 4, 23. And we will encourage people to be poor in spirit, Matthew 5, verse 3. If the Bible's men don't work, we need to be poor in spirit and look to God. Humble ourselves to him, not man, Matthew 18, verses 3 and 4. Not the preachers of men, not the leaders of men, not the politicians of men. Let God be true and every man a liar, Romans chapter 3 and verse 4. The objective truth of God will not come back empty, Isaiah 55. Indeed, the Lord will not pour out his pearls before the swine. So if you are called before the foundation of the world, and it may not be today. It's going to be based on God's timing. You know, it's not meant for many people to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13, verse 11. But if you're called before the foundation of the world and it's time for you, the Lord will give you, allow you to see and understand his word. You'll understand prophecies of the Bible. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth beneath. You know, one day is to the Lord as is a thousand years for men. The Lord allowed Gnosticism for six days, about 6,000 years of humanity. 
But on the Lord's Sabbath for a thousand years, that's going to be divided into two ages. And again, this is, we're in Christian spiritual warfare. That means we only have the Bible in part now. First Corinthians chapter 13, 9 through 12. But we're going to have the Bible full, completed for 1,000 years where humanity is in the kingdom of God. And then, of course, the end will come. And when death comes, the kingdom will be transferred over to God, the Father. But the Lord allowed Gnosticism for six days, but on the Lord's Sabbath, divided into two ages, Ephesians 2, 7, he will rule over this world just as he's been ruling in heaven. There's a great day coming, but there's also a sad, sad day. That's what he's talking about here. The signs on the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord come, the great and notable day. Now, that's what we read in the book of Revelation, a vision. We see now, before, men couldn't understand the parables about the kingdom. Men couldn't understand the visions about the kingdom. This is all symbolism in the book of Revelation, but the day of the Lord, that means that for evil men, this is, this is it. These are the end times. These last 40 years. Men need to repent. If men can't repent, it's going to be a horrible, horrible thing as if the sun turns in darkness and the moon into blood. That great, notable day. And it shall be that whoever will call on the name or the authority of the Lord rather than the authority of a preacher who's a man, in the 40 years before the kingdom, if you obey the perfect preacher, you're going to be saved. You know, during the apostasy, apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, denominational Gnostic apostasy, the righteous were saved by grace and not at all by the Bible's doctrines and religions of men. But now calling on the name of the Lord involves being poor in spirit, Matthew 5, 13, humbling ourselves as little children before God, Matthew 18, 3 and 4, and obeying the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 4, 23, being born of the water and the spirit. We didn't have the spirit before. We didn't have the Bible from God. We had strange fires, Leviticus 10, verse 1. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God unto you by mighty works and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, even as you yourselves know, him being delivered up by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. You by the hand of lawless men did crucify and slay, who God raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. And the gates of Hades could not hold Christ. For David said concerning him, Psalm 16, 8, I beheld the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Christ then would sit down on the right hand of God for 40 years, even before he began his reign on this earth in 70 AD, Ephesians 2, 6 and 7. Now David would say, Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also shall dwell in hope, because you will not leave my spirit in Hades. The spirit of David would remain in Hades until the first resurrection. And then he would go to the great wedding feast in heaven. And so all our loved ones, they are waiting in paradise for the second coming of the Lord. For when the second age of the kingdom comes, and they will rise and be a part of the kingdom of God in the heavenly perspective will be the great wedding feast that's going to last for about 750 years. The great wedding feast is going to contain billions of people, not the 15 or 20 people that preachers of men decide get to go to heaven. Neither will you give your Holy One to see corruption, Christ's body. He re remained in the grave for just portions of three days. You made known unto me the ways of life. You shall make me full of gladness with your presence. The Father raised up Christ from the dead, and the Lord was glad to be back with the Father in heaven. Remember, Paul talks about a 
be good for me to stay here and be with you, but uh, better for me to go be with the Lord. Paul, when he died, he went to the Hadean realm because the kingdom of heaven was not there yet. It wouldn't come till 70 AD. And he would be just like David. He was waiting for Christ till the first resurrection. Being therefore an inspired one, a prophet, the Holy Spirit was speaking these words through Peter. God breathed words. Peter knew some things, but the Holy Spirit made sure that what he said and what he spoke was what God would have men hear. God breathed. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins he would set one upon his throne, Seeing this beforehand, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Now man is created in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. When Jesus was crucified, his spirit went to paradise, the Hadean realm, and his body was in the grave. And then Christ was alive on this earth for 40 days, probably foreshadowing the 40 years of Christian spiritual warfare that Christians would be involved in before the first resurrection. And they were resurrected to be in heaven. Dead would, be ri would rise first, so the living would be in the kingdom of God. Jesus said there would be some living that would see the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God great wedding feast it's going to be composed of the righteous dead in heaven and those who are righteous christians on this earth this jesus did god raise up of which we are all witnesses now we know god is real because for 1600 years he hid these truths from us but now they're back being therefore by the right hand of god exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you see and hear. For David ascended not into the heavens, but Christ did. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, set you on my right hand till I make your enemies footstools of your feet. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus who you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? We have been in Gnosticism the last 1,680 years. The wisdom of men, the moral standards of men rather than the moral standards of God. And so we've had great warfares and fought against one another. And, and of course, at this time, he's talking about the crucifixion of Christ. It was the same thing, a different falling away different time that men were in apostasies before the first age of the kingdom. These folks are in the same dilemma that we are in right now. The whole world has fallen apart for them. They've been fighting on the devil's side. The prince of the power of air had ruled over them with the Septuagint, the Bible that was the authority behind the crucifixion of Christ. First John chapter 4, verse 3. John 4, verse 3. They were antichrist. They didn't believe Christ came in the flesh. How'd they do that? They changed she changed the Bible, the word Elohim, into singular instead of plural, so that Christ couldn't be, couldn't come in the flesh. He, he wasn't God the Father, so he couldn't come in the flesh because there's only one God. That was their philosophy, that was their teaching, that was the wisdom of men. And so there was battles going on right then about the wisdom of men versus the wisdom of God. And now the king of kings is getting ready to reign. He would come into the Lord was at hand. 40 years, and they're saying, what well, shall we do? Consider Revelation 18, verse 4, come out from among them. That's what. That's basically what Peter is saying right here. God made him Lord in Christ. This Jesus who you crucified. Now you need to figure out what side you want to be on. So that's, brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent you and be immersed. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's salvation. God's going to save you from this crooked and perverse generation. We'll see that in a minute. Repent. What are we repent? Why are we repenting now? 
the Bibles of men, the religions of men, Gnosticism. For 40 years, we're going to be fighting Christian spiritual warfare to overcome Gnosticism. Repent of Gnosticism. Overcome it. Or start over and come in it. So you enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. Christ's kingdom. Repent of Gnosticism and be immersed. Every one of you. By the authority of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. Doctor of men doesn't forgive sins. The preaching of men doesn't forgive sins. The preaching of Christ does. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Salvation brought down from heaven. For to you is the promise. Christianity is divided into two ages. But for 4,300 years before that time, people didn't have this opportunity for the kingdom of God. But now they did. It's a special time. Just like right now is a special time. Special opportunities. For you is the promise. And to your children until 348, about 250 years, they would be in the kingdom but it's also to all that are far off. That means those of the second coming in 2022. 20, those getting ready for the second coming. Now realizing that the second coming, heaven is at hand. So for 40 years, 40 years, we will fight Christian spiritual warfare because the second coming is at hand. To all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto him. Have you been called before the foundations of the world to be a Christian? Probably are. If you can believe these words, probably are. You are. Now, God's not going to give you this message. You're not going to come in contact with truth. God is not a respecter of persons. He just knows who will respond to truth and who will not. He's not going to cast his pearls before swine. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto him. And with many other words, he testified. And exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. Then they that received his word were immersed. And there were added to them in that day about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching. The apostles' teaching was the Lord's preaching. Objective truth, supernatural wisdom from above. And fellowship and the breaking of bread. You want to know how they had all things in common here? How they all believed the same thing? Because they didn't have denominational Bibles and Bibles of men that Satan encouraged. Men can do that. Men can give truth. No, we can't. Doesn't work. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through. The apostles, again, we don't need miracles today. Our proof is that God has kept all of humanity in ignorance for 1,680 years. And now, all of a sudden, you can understand things written in the Bible 3,600 years ago. Now, they had all things in common. Is it socialism? No, of course not. The Holy Spirit was there with them. What like they were turning it over to men that said, trust me, like these flashy impressive preachers today no no in the second age of christianity we will we will not be forced to trust any men with our money how's that possible because we'll have things like digital currency we can take care of the things that need to be taken care of without putting our money all in one big pile oh they couldn't but they had the holy spirit watching that pile for them the ways of men don't work Look at the world today and what do, what do men do with the money that given to them by others? <laughs> it doesn't work. The ways of men, religions of men do not work. And day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the assembly day by day, those who would be saved. Those that were called before the foundation of the world. You know, we're probably, if you've been called before the foundation of the world, you're probably 
going to start studying your Bible on a daily basis to get ready for the second coming of the Lord. I am Randall Kent Maxwell, soon to be your brother in Christ. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching us today. We have commentaries, paperbacks, hardbacks, zip drives, EPUBs available. I want to share with you the pearl of great price. The question we should all ask is, what is good and evil? Objective moral truth from God is good, and subjective moral truths and lies from men are evil. Let God be true and every man a liar. For 1,680 years, the Lord has hidden objective truth in the book of Revelation. This has allowed mankind to test out the subjective moral truths of men. We're starting to come out of the spiritual dark ages and are restoring the perfect law of liberty. www.lulu.com slash spotlight slash time of the son of man.